Do you think the rich have an unfair advantage? What characteristic do you think they have that the poor do not? The secret advantage is their thirst for knowledge. Basically, they're willing to read and learn. President Harry S. Truman says, not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. And Mark Twain is famous for saying, the man who doesn't read good books has no advantage over the man who can't read them at all. Here are four finance books that have significantly impacted my life. These books didn't just change how I think about money, they transformed my relationships, the mindset, how I think about the world, and my overall state of happiness. I was able to go from a disgruntled corporate employee to an investor who owns a portfolio of rental properties that comfortably pays for my lifestyle and enabled me to become a CEO of a multi-million dollar consulting company. If you're looking to improve various aspects of your life, these books are must-reads. So let's dive right into it. The first book on our list is an absolute classic. It's one that you have to put on your reading list if you haven't read it before, and it's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This should be required reading for absolutely all humans. No one has distilled life's wisdom down into a better book. This was one of the first self-development books that I ever read, and if you can believe it, it was published back all the way in 1937. Even though some of its advice might feel like obvious common sense today, it was groundbreaking when it first came out, and it remains incredibly relevant all these years later. The book is a cornerstone for developing better social skills and learning how to connect with other humans in a meaningful and realistic way. The biggest takeaway from this book is the importance of being interested rather than being interesting. Carnegie emphasizes that you genuinely care about others and show interest in them. You're a human. Be a real human. You are naturally become more likable. Not in a manipulative way, but in a sincere and genuine way. Here are a few key lessons from the book. Number one, become genuinely curious about other people and their lives. When you take a real interest in other people, you actually ask questions and you want to hear their answer, it's easier to build strong, positive relationships. Number two, remember that a person's name is the sweetest sound they can hear. So use it often, people's names in conversations to make them feel important and valued and appreciated. Number three, frame conversations around the other person's interests. Rather than focusing solely on what you want to say, consider what the other person cares about and tailor your conversations accordingly. How rare is it to talk to someone who isn't just waiting for you to finish so they can say what they want to? Once you learn to become a person who can frame a conversation about the other party, then you won't believe how much it can change your life. Number four, make those around you feel significant and appreciated. A little acknowledgement and gratitude can go a long way in strengthening your connection with people. As a business owner, this is so important in managing and leading other people. We believe that if we build the people, the people will build the company. So that's our primary focus in our company. As Carnegie wisely sums up, you can make more friends in just two months by becoming interested in other people than you could in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. This book is a timeless guide to building lasting relationships that can enrich your personal and professional life for years to come. Next up is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. I came across this book when I was feeling really stuck in my life. Uh, despite my continued efforts, I just wasn't achieving the results that I wanted in my life. And a close friend recommended it to me, and it turned out to be an absolute game changer in my life. Dispenza's book dives really deep into the sciences of how our thoughts and feelings shape who we are and what we can achieve. He explains that our conscious mind, what we're aware of in the moment, is just the very tip of the iceberg. The other 90% lies in our subconscious mind, which is vast repository of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. This subconscious mind drives much of what we do, often with us not even realizing it. One of the key concepts in the book is that our brains form these neural connections based on repeated thoughts and behaviors. The more we think and feel something, the stronger these connections become, turning into habits that shape our reality. Dispenza teaches how to rewire your brain by breaking these old connections and forming new ones, essentially allowing you to reinvent yourself by actually rewiring your brain to think in a different way. We are just a result of the thoughts, feelings, emotions, etc., and our behaviors. If we can interrupt our default thinking, then we can change who we are and we can really change anything in our life. While some of the book's content can be extremely dense, especially with a mix of 
like neuroscience and quantum physics and spirituality, the overall takeaways are incredibly powerful. Dispenza provides practical strategies for transforming your mindset and creating a life that aligns with your deepest desires. This book is not just about self-improvement. It's about fundamentally changing how you interact with the world and what you believe is possible for yourself. And it's worth the read just to convince yourself that you can actually become somebody else. The third book I want to share with you is The Three Marriages by David White. This book made me really rethink my entire approach to life, particularly how I balance my commitments. White's central idea or thesis is that we don't have just one marriage in our life to our partner, but instead we have three, one to our significant other or spouse, whatever, one to our work, and then one to ourselves personally. As someone who has juggled work, relationships, personal growth, this book was revolutionary for me. Before reading it, I believed I needed to compartmentalize all these aspects of my life and just switch tasks between them, dedicating specific hours to each thing. But White argues that this work-life balance mentality is overly simplistic and not practical. Instead, he suggests that these three marriages are interconnected and interdependent. They shouldn't be treated as separate domains to be balanced. Rather, they should support and enhance one another. This idea really resonated with me. I realized that I had been kind of pitting these different aspects of my life against each other, always feeling like I had to sacrifice my relationship in order to achieve success in business, for example. Uh, the key takeaway that changed everything for me was understanding that true harmony comes from not having to always balance, but from integrating, kind of intermeshing these areas together. How can my work feed my relationship? How can my relationship nourish my sense of personal self? It's all about finding synergies rather than seeing them as competing priorities, which is what I was doing before. The book is filled with real life stories and White's very engaging writing style, which made the concepts feel very personal and relatable, makes it a much easier read. If you're struggling with the notion of managing the absolute chaos of the modern world and creating this kind of work-life balance we hear people talk about, this book will give you a new framework for approaching your commitments in a way that brings some fulfillment and harmony and joy to each aspect of your life versus them being competing domains. Now, finally, let's talk about the fourth book, which is my favorite on the list. It's called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. And this is the book about identifying and overcoming barriers that prevent us from reaching our complete full potential. And it is the book that I probably give away and talk about the most. Hendrix introduces this concept of the upper limit problem. You'll, you'll hear it referred to as the ULP all through the book, which is the idea that we have an internal success thermostat that determines how much success, love, and happiness we allow ourselves to experience. When we exceed this limit, we often self-sabotage ourselves to return back to the levels that feel comfortable. Hendricks argues that in order to truly thrive, we need to identify these self-imposed limits and break through, push through. He talks about the importance of moving into what he calls your, your zone of genius versus your zone of competence or zone of excellence where you're doing the work that you're uniquely suited to do, and that brings you the most joy and fulfillment, kind of being in that zone, so to speak. That's what he would refer to as the zone of genius. This requires a, a leap, a, a big leap, out of your comfort zone and into a life that's not just good, but great. One of the single most impactful ideas from this book is that our fears and doubts often hold us back from taking this big leap that he talks about in the book. We tell ourselves stories about why we can't or shouldn't go after what we really want. But Hendrix challenges us to confront these fears and move forward anyway, trusting that the rewards on the other side are worth the risk. The big leap is a powerful reminder that we are often our own biggest obstacles. By recognizing and pushing past our upper limits, we can achieve more than we ever thought possible. The book is I think a must read for anyone who feels like they're perhaps holding themselves back and wants to break through to another level in their life or their career, whatever. If you want to make a great leap forward, this is the book for you. So there you have it, four non-finance books that have had a really big impact on my life. And each of these books offers a unique insight, maybe a different strategy for improving different areas of your life be they from relationships to personal growth or achieving your full potential. If you haven't read these books yet, I would highly recommend adding them to your list. They've helped me tremendously, and I'm confident that they can do the same for you. I'd also love to hear from you what 
of these non-finance books have you read that have made a difference in your life or any ones that you would like to add to the list? Share your recommendations in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. We've queued up another video for you right here for your viewing pleasure.